so we are going to start with the breaking bad news station um so it, it's gonna be with full of ips skills so i hope that you guys can keep grasping it every now and then if you have any questions either put it in the chat box or you can just wait till the end of the session and i will take all the questions now first of all bbn a lot of people would were asking in the group when i wrote bbn a lot of people would be a newcomer and they would have written what is a bbn so bbn is nothing but breaking bad news um so first we have to understand what it is all about all right so as i said it's an essential skill for all the doctors to be aware of the breaking bad news and how we need to do it because it's a very important and essential part of a gmc examination next when we are actually disclosing a bbn we have to understand that it not only affects us but it affects the person who is actually on the other side let it be over a telephone or let it be face to face consultation okay now when you break a bad news they start thinking about their future when are they going to die how much time do they have how is their family going to survive a lot of things which comes whenever you think that you are going to die or when you are having a grave disease let's say cancer or something some diseases which cannot be treated or which has a less longevity in such scenarios obviously patient will start thinking about the future and thousands of questions will start running in their mind okay now breaking bad news i said it's it's a complex and a sensitive task it will require a lot of practice it's 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 very important that we practice bbn almost uh, every time we practice a station with our colleagues because it is very important um as a task in the examination purposes okay remember breaking bad news obviously as i said when you deliver a bad news it has to be in a very compassionate way okay it it's not like disclosing a diagnosis okay you are having a diabetes it shouldn't be that in that way you have to be very compassionate and you you we have to make the situation as easier as possible for the patients to cope up if they have their families or relatives along with them for them to cope up as well as ourselves to be in a simple and an easy environment so that we can complete the task in 8 minutes of time so we have to be compassionate we have to be giving a lot of pauses in between and then we will be having a very less amount of time that's why whenever we have a breaking bad news station you have to understand the time that you will be giving for taking a history and for disclosing a diagnosis because when you disclose a diagnosis you obviously have to give a lot of pause it might take minute and a half sometimes maybe 2 minutes depending upon how the simulator is acting in front of you okay so we have to make it easier for uh, everyone to cope up okay next thing now you must have heard obviously that you have to break in in layers when you are talking about breaking bad news so you must have heard about the main protocol called spikes but there are a lot of other protocols which are available which is called as a b c d e and there are other few as well so you can follow either or whichever you feel is okay for you you can feel that or you can use that spikes is a better way because it is simple and can also be used in colleague station as well in that it will not be spikes it will be only spice without a k right so what are we going to do is we are going to see what are the spikes all about okay so first is obviously about the setting next is about the perception i is invitation when you invite the um when you invite the patient when you tell them that if you they need anyone in along with them so that you can disclose a diagnosis k stands for knowledge you have to understand how much do they have as a knowledge and when are you starting to break in about the diagnosis and what you can do for their future you have to take all the emotions and every single pathway to make sure that the patient is as comfortable as possible so that they feel ease when you are disclosing a diagnosis and strategy and summary so strategizing what next can be done in terms of for them and what can be done uh, for their future planning for their treatment planning for their follow ups and all those things when i'm talking about a b c d e i will just give a brief description what does it mean a stands for advanced preparation that means we obviously advanced preparation in a hospital setting is different but i will talk only about the examination setting what is an advanced preparation means as soon as you see the question and you figure it out that it's a breaking bad news you have to figure out few things that you have to speak in the um in the station or in the cubicle 
and you should be thinking about the question that you might expect in the station so instead of thinking all those questions before the cubicle what i would ask you guys to do is whenever you are practicing a breaking bad new station think about all those questions when you, while you are practicing before even going to the examination how to answer them how to tackle them so that will give you an advantage b stands for building a therapeutic relationship so this basically means that you have to make a very good eye contact you have to build your rapport with the patient so that whatever you are saying they are able to imbibe and whatever they are showing as a verbal and a non verbal cue you are able to understand and acknowledge at the same time now d d is for dealing with patients and family reactions so dealing how you have to deal you have to deal with both the patients because both of them are present at the same time okay so in, in, in scenarios like this it's very very important for us to understand how we are going to proceed and how it is going for us in the breaking bad news station next comes encouraging and validating emotions for e it means encouraging and validating emotions so letting the patient speak giving enough time to the patient enough time for the patient to voice their concerns you have to push them you have to push them a little to ask whatever concerns they are having at their mind because as soon as you break the bad news thousands of questions will be running in their mind first first question which will go in my mind if somebody tells me the uh, news that i am having cancer is doctor have you checked it twice are you completely sure that i am having cancer that's one of the very important question that you might come across okay the next question that you might come across is do you think i'm going to die soon how much time do i have left doctor this can't be happening we'll discuss all these questions when it comes this is a brief overview that all these things have to be broken in layers when we when we basically do or practice a station we generally forget spikes but we tend to ask questions uh, maybe one question before one question later and that somehow breaks the rhythm of the story in breaking bad news but in scenarios of this if you are um asking about the knowledge before before you are even set up before you have done the entire setting before you have invited them you are talking about the knowledge you are kind of messing up the entire storyline of the breaking bad news all right so it's it's very it becomes very very important in that way next what does a setting generally means okay first part of the setting is comfortable quiet room and environment so what do i mean by that that when you are in the hospital obviously the discussion basically takes place in a comfortable quiet and a private room but obviously when you are talking about in the cubicle we can assume that we are already in a comfortable room because nobody is there no one can hear you only you and the patient are in the room if it's a telephone conversation obviously again you are on one side and patient is on the other side so nobody is there so you can assume that you are already in a comfortable and a quiet room next i said so you have to establish the initial rapport and you have to keep maintaining the eye contact so you would have heard this time and again that eye contact is very important in a in any in any station that you are basically going so if people say that even you are standing if the patient is standing you stand so that you have a good eye contact if the patient is sitting you sit so that you can have a parallel eye contact if you if the patient is very anxious they are asking tons of question the first thing is forget about introducing yourself the first thing is to make both the patients calm once you make the patient calm then you introduce yourself who you are and then you tell that we are here to take care of you your child whosoever is it and your child or your son or your brother is in very good hands do not worry about it and make them sit make them calm then initiate the conversation and looking at the way you proceeded you will get high scores even in history taking and in management right so that makes a very big impact next as i have said you have to allow the time to express the emotions and ask and let the patients ask as many questions as possible any ethical scenario or any um any counseling scenarios you have to let the patients take the lead of the entire station think about them like a viva they are the one who is asking questions you are the one who are basically replying once they are out of questions you ask them do you have anything else or anything else that is bothering you i know i know mr smith there would be thousands of questions running through your mind is there any particular thing which is concerning you the most right now 
so obviously you know that patients will be having five six concerns and maybe if you don't have time you cannot answer all the five six concerns so what is the better way to go about it you have to start asking them i know mr smith that you will be having thousands of questions in your mind or you will be having tons of questions running through your mind at this moment of time is there any particular question that is bothering you the most and make it in the order of preference once the order of preference is understood you have answered the most important question running in their mind and even if the time runs out even if you have answered two or three questions you are still in a very safe place so that's the that's a safe way of playing how uh, how you can answer patient okay. next you have to mentally prepare yourself and anticipate the questions as i said once you have done an anticipating the questions a lot of things becomes much much easier in terms of you when you are in the examination hall so you have to be very anticipating what questions might be coming up in front of you and once you are prepared with those answers by yourself in your own unique way i don't advise to um to read obviously you can read the answers from any scripts but form your own answers so make few questions for example in cases of diabetes in cases of other scenarios of let's suppose dvlas in 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 terms of epilepsy in terms of bracelets okay all such scenarios in patients concerns try writing it in your own words okay because you, when you speak it with your own words it becomes much more natural it comes to you naturally and you will have that expression and you will have that empathy along with it and you will not sound scripted as well okay as i've said always you can ask the patient that do they prefer a family member or a friend here you can ask them in the very beginning there are many different ways where you can ask them you can ask them in the setting in the s position the in the very beginning you can ask do you want anyone from your family member or a friend to be here while we discuss the result so that is all about setting the next thing comes is perception right the first thing about perception is that you have to use an open ended questions and that is very very important for understanding how the patient is feeling this will not only help you understand what they are trying what they are what is going on in their mind but will also help you to deliver all the information later on in the consultation so for example how you can start you can just say before we start mrs smith i just wanted to ask you what is your understanding of the tests and why were they done uh like let's suppose you're talking to the daughter you can ask can you please tell me what do you understand from your mother's condition till now or what do you understand about your mother's condition your father's condition your brother's condition whatever it is the relation they have establishing what the person what the patient knows is very very important it might be possible that the patient knows about the diagnosis right and it might be possible that the patient does not know about the diagnosis so asking this question becomes very important has anyone spoken to you or has anyone been here to discuss the results or has anybody been here to discuss what's going on with your health so this question will give you an idea whether they know how much do they know and what do they have to say about it so these are the very open ended questions that you have to ask in the very initial phase of your perception to understand about the patient's understanding okay the next thing that you can ask in perception is ensure that the patient is able and willing to hear what you will say maybe once you know that it's a bad diagnosis you might ask the patient do they want to even know what you are about to say okay would you like to discuss about the results you have to ask you just can't go discussing yourself just because you have to maybe the patient might say no no doctor i don't want to know the result or maybe i don't want to know the result now maybe he he would have a lot of questions it could be possible so we have to cover all our bases we don't have to be in a position where we are um caught by surprise by a question that the patient throw at us so we have to secure our ground before we reach a diagnosis and before we can disclose the diagnosis okay next as i've said allow time to express the emotions and ask them questions so sometimes after you disclose the diagnosis the patients will be in complete shock they will take a pause and it's okay for them to take a pause give them enough time to take the pause okay that's very important give them time to take the pause do not interrupt maybe if you are thinking that it's quite a lot of time maybe you can just count maybe 10 seconds in your mind 1 2 3 if they do not speak then you start up and say 
Mr. Smith, I can understand this is a very difficult situation and I am so sorry that I am the one to disclose the results to you today or I am the one to break the results, break the news to you. Once you break the ice, the patient will speak up after that. So you have to give them five, six, seven or 10 seconds of time. Do not be afraid of losing time because that's the patient's time to imbibe the bigger atom bomb that we have thrown at them. So it's very important in, in that respect. Okay. Um, the next one is about mentally prepare yourself to anticipate all the questions as I have already told about it. Now, when I was discussed, when we were discussing about the initial open questions, there are many other questions which people tend to ask and you can also ask. Uh, one question that I generally prefer to ask is, have you, how have you been since you were last seen or since we last saw you? So that gives an idea about what has occurred between the time of the investigation that we took till the time he has come to take the result. Does, has a symptom got worsen? Has a symptom be the same? Has a symptom improved? He would say something and we can use that in the management. We can use that part of the answers in the management part. Okay. For example, we can also tell, um, I understand Mr. Smith that there were reasons that you wanted to do the tests so that we could find out what you have been experiencing, the symptoms you described to us in the last consultation. Were you aware of any sort of things that the investigations might show? So. When you ask this question, maybe the patient might immediately say, doctor, maybe I think that it might be cancer. Doctor, I think it is something very grave. Doctor, I think it could be something very sinister. And then you can acknowledge, Mr. Smith, I can see where you're coming from. There is a possibility of it, but let's not jump into conclusion right away. Let me ask you a few more questions. So that's how you acknowledge it, but not saying no, it's not cancer or yes, it's cancer. Never give a firm answer in the beginning of the consultation. Never do that because then you have lost the plot. Again, breaking bad news is kind of a story. It has to go with the story so that you make it very simple, initiate layer by layer and slow by slow, taking the confidence of the patient, making sure that you have built a good rapport and then you disclose the diagnosis. So it's like a plot. You don't have to, we don't have to lose the plot. And hence, we have to ask tons of questions before we even reach to disclosing the diagnosis. It always is a good that when you are talking about perception, you go in order of events. So you begin by discussing the sequence of events which has led to this point of you disclosing the results. For example, you were done scans, biopsies, you were done with the examination, first investigation, second investigation, so on. You have to check if the patient is able or willing to hear what you have to say. Just don't disclose the diagnosis. We have to offer them. Do they even want to know? How much do they want to know about the diagnosis? Okay, it's very, very important that we know about all those things. Next, next comes the invitation. How do we invite now, most patients, obviously, in the cubicle or for the examination purposes, I'm telling you. So most patients will indicate that they want full information. That's obviously the scenarios because it's an examination. They will want you to disclose everything so that they can uh, they can see how good we are. So most of the patients will. OK, if not, if the patients are not in case, we have to be open for that question as well. If they say that they are not willing to know every detail or maybe nothing at all about the diagnosis, you have to answer any questions in future. For example, you can ask, I can understand this is a very difficult situation for you, Mr. Smith. Would you like to schedule another appointment or another consult consultation so that we can disclose the diagnosis? Now, when we come to the next part of the invitation, it says that we need to use a very appropriate language which should be comprehend and it should be easy for the patients to understand. That means it simply means that we need to use very simple languages in order to make sure that the patient understands what we are talking, what is the diagnosis and what we are trying to do in terms of its management. Uh, try to avoid jargons as much as possible in this situation. Now, as I have, we have already discussed many times that patients are very sensitive when we are discussing about such kind of disclosure of the diagnosis. They would have never thought about it before, before they would have gone through such, um, such tests and other things. 
um, but in this moment when you have already given some breaking shots you have given some clues and you have given some layering already that we are going to now disclose something really um, which you, they were not expecting today now the patient reaction will be very sensitive so we need to be sensitive in how they react their reaction can be with anger but we need to be sensitive we need to understand where they are coming from we need to acknowledge what they are feeling at that particular moment okay and the same thing whenever we disclose very important do they how much do they want to know and do they even want to know the diagnosis very very important stuff now let's look at the knowledge part now knowledge is always very important because it will serve as a warning shot to the patient which may help to reduce the shock of disclosure in order to do so it's very important that we deliver the information in sizable chunks and regularly keep checking the patient's understanding which is also called as chunk and check technique so you give small information in the form of small chunks and you keep checking if the patient is understanding or following whatever you have disclosed to the patient okay next point is to make sure that you give enough warning shot and enough pauses between the warning shots and the actual disclosure for the patient for example you can say as you know that we did some biopsy or we did a scan and unfortunately the results were not as we had hoped for allow some good amount of pause if necessary let the patient be able to digest because at this point of time they will be able to understand that something is wrong okay and then you start providing information in very simple language okay i'm sorry to tell you this but the results from the investigation shows that you have a mass growing in the lung for example okay something it is very important so it's very important that you um explain the patients in a very simple language that they can understand give enough pauses before disclosing the actual diagnosis okay also tell the patients it's very important to give the patient information regarding the next steps for example such as the follow up appointment if uh, you know if this is not possible then offer them a realistic time scale of the events and reviews when you are going to see them again or when they have to go to the gp or when they have to go to a specialist in two weeks time in four weeks time and what they will be expecting once they go to that particular doctor so all these future setup the next steps the follow up appointments need to be told to them so that they understand that moving forward what is our plan of management keeping in view their diagnosis right and always reassure the patient of the ongoing support because this will help them to cope and feel less isolated they will understand that we being a doctor we being their doctor are a, are doing everything possible in regards to their diagnosis and their further treatment and management okay so all these things becomes very important when it comes to disclosing the diagnosis so you know there are many examples that i can provide i'm afraid it's not the news we were hoping for you mrs brown unfortunately the lump is due to a more serious underlying cause for example and i'm sorry to tell you but give a pause and then you can say i'm sorry to tell you but you have a mass in your in your breast which seems to be like a cancer pause until the patient speak or seems readily want to talk again make sure your tone is very respectful at a very slow pace and is very clear all right now apart from this as i have told you how much do they want to know and do they even want to know or not right now let's talk about for e which is empathy or e which is emotions it is very important that we understand that we have given we have disclosed something really really big so we don't need to make any assumption about how the patient might be feeling we know that the patient is not feeling really well of course we know that but we can't make um how to say we can't make it very obvious or we can't make an assumption as to what the patient is thinking their body language their emotions will be completely reflecting uh, what they are thinking about it so we need to recognize and respond according to their emotions empathy and their concerns always remember that you do not have to lie okay encourage them to express what they are feeling okay what they are thinking at this moment of time 
and respect their wishes which is the most important thing that we need to do respect what they want to do moving forward with their management with their decisions uh, with their future planning of their diagnosis all of these are very important okay and as i said do not lie about the prognosis why because patient would want to know by providing a wrong information or if we don't have an information clearly state that i cannot answer this question at this point of time but never give a false hope it's very very important okay never give a false hope next as i said in the knowledge part as well give the patient information regarding the next steps what are we going to do and how are we going to proceed further on according to their diagnosis which is very important right and then always remember that it's very important to again tell everything in a very small information and all patients are different some patients will be able to sink in tin and they would want to know their prognosis they will want to know everything about what are we going to do next some patients will just do not want to know because they are so overwhelmed by the fact about their diagnosis they are um they are feeling so much inside there is rush of emotions inside sadness is going on so they are unable to accept it so all these things are coming as a huge shock for the patient and it's very important that we understand every patient will be different right so always start saying that i'm so sorry but at this stage i do not have any inf enough information to answer your question hopefully in the next few weeks when we have completed some tests probably i will be more clear i am really sorry i can appreciate that it will be frustrating for you to be left with the unanswered questions it's important that you are very clear to the patient that at this moment of time if suppose if you don't know the prognosis never say what's the prognosis tell them very clearly that you can't answer the you can't answer the question and because you do not have enough information at this stage of time okay right now let's look on to the next one which is s which is strategy and the summary so make a plan together when you make a plan together that means it's very important that you involve the patient in the management plan because that's how you are going to understand what the patient actually needs moving forward ahead maybe some patients will tell you that i do not need any treatment doctor i am anyways going to die i don't need any treatment so it's very important to ask them to encourage them to say what they are feeling at this moment of time tell you are sorry it's a rush of emotions it's too much to take in but ask them what are their thoughts what is going on in their mind okay if possible always provide a reading material for the patient for example some leaflets some websites where they can go and understand more about the situation all right because these will help them probably more when they are at their home when they go back probably they would want to find out a little bit more about their conditions and they can come back and talk to you about the treatment options about the prognosis about whatever they feel like moving ahead they want to do okay suppose if you are not able to answer any of the question it's very important that you tell them that um i will be i will be collecting as many questions as possible and if i'm not able to answer probably we'll have to set up another meeting for you where probably my seniors would be present my specialist doctors would be present who will be in a much better position to answer all of your questions at that time will that be all right okay so you are sorry because you are you don't know you don't have enough information you probably you don't know and you are not able to provide so you tell them that i am going to look into this specific question and probably we will set up another uh, meeting with you your friend or your family members so that we can together answer all of your concerns at that time and along with me probably there will be some specialist doctors who will be in a better position to answer all of your questions which i am not able to answer in this meeting okay always remember as i said all the time in breaking bad news do not try to rush the patient to make a decision about the treatment because some patient will know okay this is what i need some patient will do not know some patient would like to discuss some patient would like to think some patient would like to know more about their um, more 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 about their uh, diagnosis before they make any treatment plans so every patient will be different so do not push them to make a decision for the treatment tell them that they need as much time they have want to they can take as much time as they want in order to decide about their treatment but this is how we can go forward okay 
and if the patient is very imminently dying or if we know that uh, they are talking about something about future you can always talk about asking them if they have any religious preference in how do they want the treatment to go ahead some may say doctor i do not want to have blood transfusion some may say i do not want to have a bone marrow transplantation depending upon the diagnosis and the treatment but there can be some religious preferences and whether or not the patient will uh, like to have a chaplain along with it or not so all these things becomes important when you are thinking about breaking bad news because always remember when you are breaking bad news we are always thinking from patient's perspective every patient is different try to encourage them to speak about their concerns so that you can use those concern and address them in the management part really well and that will be a bonus point okay so let's discuss on the points to note every recipient should receive a disclosure which is a face to face which is very important in a private setting and we have to be treated with respect honesty and with sensitivity because all the information you are providing is very sensitive give information very honestly but with sensitivity your tone should be very low your tone should be very calming and very clear you you should be listening very importantly what the patient wants so encourage them to talk always remember breaking the news in small chunk and check technique so you give small chunks of information and check whether uh, whether the patient is understanding or not understanding be very comfortable give you enough pauses try to be try, try to silence if the patient is not speaking or you need to give time for the patient to sink in whatever information you have given and then let them respond let them respond about what they are thinking in their mind always plan the next step give them what they are planning to do what you are planning to do take a uh, together decision and tell them that we will be following you in an outpatient or you will be following in a community setting we will be referring you to the uh, specialist doctor who will be seeing in you two weeks in four weeks and they might carry on some further investigations so tell them the plan moving forward and it is important to build up and maintain a good relationship because that's how you can you know be in very close understanding with the patient situation their um, understanding about the situation what they are thinking what they want ahead from uh, us as doctors and what is their actual overall thinking in total in totality avoid statements very important that you know how you, how you feel you, we don't know okay when we are breaking a bad news we do, we do not we can't imagine what they are going through to be honest um there will be a rush of emotions as i say which emotions could be tons of emotions ranging from rage fear uh, angry um being scared it will be a tons of emotions which will be going on so we can never understand how they are feeling and that's one of the reasons why we encourage them to tell right and there is nothing more we can do never you say that we will nothing but there's always something that we can do always remember that okay so this is what i generally try to do a four layered approach so in the four layered approach the first thing i try to do is to understanding to un to make sure to and see how the patient have understood so i just ask them that can you tell me what is your understanding of the tests and why they were done so we'll get a brief of a history that why they were done so they were with so and so complaints they came to the hospital the doctor told them to go and get such and such tests right and then we ask about what symptoms you had then you dig in a little bit about the presenting complaint of the patients when they came for getting the tests done and then you invite then you start with the invitation would you like me to you know how have you been since you were last seen or how have you been since we last saw you would you like me to call someone for you before we discuss the results or condition and so on right and the third point being prepare for the bad news with warning shots so warning shots can be in various ways unfortunately the test results have come back or unfortunately the test results do show some abnormal findings or unfortunately the test results do not show what we had hoped for i'm afraid it looks more serious than we hoped for all these different different words and sentences you can use give a pause after the warning shot when you know that this is the time you are going to disclose before that give a good warning shot and a good pause because at that moment of time they would have already understood there is something really grave that you are going to discuss with them right and then break the news in a very simple manner small and simple sentences i'm sorry i know that you were not expecting to hear this today and i'm sorry that i had to break this news but the result shows that you have blah blah so whatever you say it's very simple make sure you say sorry 
tell them that of course it is not what you were expecting when you came in for the consultation today but the results show that you have this and this so all this becomes very important and the patient will be able to sink in whatever we are trying to say all right so this was completely in details about what we can do however there are few other detail that i would like to share with you guys now all right so always remember that setting the scene is very important today so always check before we begin can i just check if you came with someone or came alone that's you start you can start with beginning with that okay and we have not you if you are seeing for the patient for the first time and you can start by saying that we have not met previously so before we speak about the result can you tell me a little bit more about your symptoms so then you will start understanding why the patient came initially and why was this test ordered okay um you can start by and then when you break the bad news always remember i'm sorry but i have some difficult news to tell you although your results could be due to infection or inflammation we cannot exclude cancer as a possibility so, and then so all these sentences that i'm trying to say is because all these are very very different kinds of sentences that you can use and probably you know use varieties of sentences is what i would say i can imagine that it must be quite difficult for you i would like to get a nurse to make a cup of tea or take you to a quiet room before you go home i'm sure you have a lot going through your mind and i would like to see you again in a few days time to discuss this 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 will that be okay many many things can come into it of course you cannot ask for a cup of tea or um, you know um, and any other thing in the examination setting but all these questions can become important when you are talking in um, in a ward based setting or in the hospital in real life practice all right so that is all about breaking bad news and i hope it was an informative session and i really believe that practicing more and more according to the spikes protocol or probably just small steps and giving enough pauses asking them to encourage what they are feeling all these would really help you in the examination all right thank you so much for joining in guys all the best we'll see you next time